Hey guys, and welcome to chapter five. Um, we just finished up chapter four and our conversation about carbohydrates. Now we're going to move on to another macronutrient and talk about lipids. Um, and lipids um, include fats, phospholipids, and sterols. Um, and we'll go into more depth into what each of those means throughout this chapter. Just a little bit of an outline to start us off, um, some things that we'll be chatting about. Um, in this lecture, fats in our foods, different types of lipids, how lipids are absorbed and transported, lipid functions, lipids in health and disease, and meeting your lipid needs. Fats in our food. It's a little bit of an introduction. The fats in our food contribute to their texture, flavor, and aroma. Fats are appealing, but because they add more calories per gram than carbohydrate and protein, they can cause weight gain. The types of fat we eat also can affect our health. Some different sources of fat in our food. Um, we can find fat in animal sources like meat, cheese, and dairy. Um, and also in plant sources like vegetable oils, nuts, avocados, and coconut. There's also hidden dietary fats. We see these in more heavily processed foods like cheese, ice cream, whole milk, crackers, donuts, cookies, and muffins. America's changing fat intake. Eating patterns in the past 40 years have changed significantly. Our total energy intake has increased. So when we say energy intake, we're talking about calories. Um, and our intakes of saturated fat and trans fats have also increased. Different types of lipids. All right, so this chapter is entitled lipids. And lipids do refer to fat. Um, they refer to substances that do not dissolve in water. Um, and there's three main types of lipids. We have triglycerides, phospholipids, and sterols. So we're going to um, now move on into an explanation of each of those. Um, and the chemical makeup of each of these is very important in um, understanding the function of each of these types of lipids and also how they behave in your body. So first up, we have triglycerides, and triglycerides are what we normally refer to as fat. Triglycerides consist of one glycerol and three fatty acids, um, and you can kind of you can kind of get that just from the name tri, meaning three glycerides. So the glycerol and three fatty acids. Um, so this this picture is from your text, and this is a really great visual. Um, of what a molecule of triglyceride looks like. So you'll see over here on the right, we have this sort of bluish green um, long blob here. This is the glycerol backbone. Um, and so this is present in all triglycerides. And then from this glycerol backbone, we have one, two, three fatty acid side chains coming off from this one glycerol backbone. So that's a triglyceride. Now, each of these fatty acids, these yellow carbon chains coming off of the side, these can take on one of a few different shapes, um, depending on the type of triglyceride that we're talking about. But no matter what the shape of these carbon chains, you will always have a glycerol backbone and three fatty acid side chains in a triglyceride molecule. So, different types of fatty acids. Now, we're looking at just that yellow um, side chain that we saw from the last slide. Fatty acids consist of carbon chains with an acid group down here. The acid group is this COOH, carbon double bonded to an oxygen, with also a single bond to a hydroxyl group or OH. This is an acid group. <clears throat> and at the other end is a methyl group, or CH3. The methyl group can also be referred to as the omega end, 
Um, and this is important to know when we're talking about omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids later this chapter. So if you're looking at um, this fatty acid here, when you're looking at it in terms of the larger triglyceride, the acid group is down on this right end. The acid group is what binds the fatty acid to the glycerol backbone, whereas the methyl or omega end is this free end out here on the opposite end of the fatty acid molecule. Right, so that's a general, that's a general makeup of a fatty acid. Now, we can have a couple of different types of fatty acids. They can be saturated or unsaturated. Um, so this is the same fatty acid from the last slide. Um, this is a saturated fatty acid. Now, what you've heard probably saturated fat talked about, you've seen it on nutrition labels, but what does it actually mean for a fat to be saturated? Like, what does that mean? Well, what you're seeing here in this photo is a saturated fatty acid. So saturated fatty acids are fatty acids that are fully saturated with hydrogen atoms and contain only single bonds between the carbon atoms of the carbon chain. So if you remember back from some general chemistry class you took hundreds of years ago, um, carbon molecules are able to make four bonds, all right? Um, you'll notice on this acid group, this carbon is only bonded to three atoms, and that's because one of these atoms um, is bonded through a double bond. So that counts as two, three, four, four bonds. So each of these carbons, as you go through, in the middle of this chain, we have a carbon, it's bonded to two other carbons, and then two hydrogens, one on each side. And looking at this, you can see that's consistently all the way through. Every carbon has four bonds, two hydrogens, with the exception of the N, on either side. That is a saturated fatty acid. Those carbons are fully saturated with hydrogen atoms. All right? Now, we're going to move on. Um, we'll move on in just a second. Um, <coughs> So, saturated fatty acids are found in both plant and animal products. Um, they manifest themselves as solids at room temperature. Um, most saturated fatty acids are going to be found in animal products, um, but some things like coconut oil and other plant products contain very, very high um, levels of saturated fats. Um, so, for example, on the steak, the fat on the outside of the steak is solid at room temperature because it's high in saturated fatty acids. Um, and when, as we talk about the different types of fatty acids, you'll see how their molecular shape plays a role in how they act in nature. So, for a saturated fatty acid, um, because it's just this straight line of carbons and hydrogens, it the fatty acids coming off of that glycerol backbone are very, very straight. And because they're straight and very regular in shape, it's going to allow those saturated fat molecules to pack together densely, um, thus leading to the characteristic of a solid at room temperature. Okay, So straight fatty acid side chains of a saturated fat excuse me, of a saturated fat, allow those triglyceride molecules to really pack together tightly, leading to a saturated fat appearing solid at room temperature. All right, now we're going to move on to unsaturated fatty acids. So unsaturated fat, um, are fat come from fatty acids that are missing hydrogens and contain at least one double bond between the carbons of the carbon chain. So this fatty acid here looks pretty similar to the one that we just talked about with the exception of this spot right here. Now you'll notice we have two carbons here and they have hydrogens down here on the bottom but they don't have those hydrogens on the top. They're missing um, and that's because these two carbons, as you can see, have a double bond between them. So carbon on the left is connected to this carbon for one, 
this hydrogen for two, and then it's using up its last two bonds to create a double bond with its neighboring carbon. And the same is true as for this one. So because these carbons are using up two of those bonds to bond with each other, they're not able to have those additional hydrogens on the top side of the molecule. Now, what does this really mean? Well, when those carbons have a double bond in between them, it actually forms kind of a kink in that chain. Sorry, just one second. <laughs> 